Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Good afternoon, fellow workers in Christ, fellow workers in the heavenly community, those who are on Facebook, those who are on this platform this evening. I am so happy to be here another time to breathe and exhale the true wind of God. This evening, I am Archbishop Solange Lewis, serving this evening as your MC, and I am one of the national co-chair for women in ministry. As uh, we begin this evening, there's nothing we can start without a prayer. So at this time, I will ask to come with a prayer from none other than Dr. Glovinia Williams will come with us with an opening prayer. Dr. Williams. Thank you, Archbishop. Thank you so much. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here today and for us to pray together at the American Clergy Leadership Conference Women in Ministry Summit, where we're honoring women pastors and first ladies. So let us pray. But well, Father, I'm so thrilled, to say the least, to come before your people today. And we bless your holy name. We honor you because you are God. And besides you, there's really none else. You are the one that we can depend on. You're trustworthy. You're a good listener. You're Jehovah Jireh. You are indeed the provider. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you today. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for this unique role of women pastors and first ladies. We thank you today for our beloved speaker, Lord. We thank you for Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hill. We thank you, Lord, that you would bring this woman of great impact to come into our lives and to help to transform us during this time together. Father, bless the leadership that is present and those that are not here. And Father, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would give us that special blessing, that special blessing for this special occasion. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful prayer, Dr. Glovinia. Followed that will be Reverend Marlon Cotulo will come with us with the welcome address. Reverend Cotulo. Well, praise the Lord, saints. Praise now, the Lord. We are so, so pleased to be here with all of you today. And we, we commemorate all of our success to you all, to God and each of you. In behalf of the American Clergy Leadership Women in Ministry, National Co-Chairs and every member, we wanna welcome the brothers and sisters of Christ together Thank you for this summit. Thank you for joining us. And we truly, truly respect the God in each of you. And we recognize those gifts and talents. And we say thank you. Thank you for going forth as a mighty instrument of light and glory this hour and the hours to come. It is our privilege. And, and really, we are so thankful that we are here together today to honor each of you. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Cthulhu, for that wonderful welcome. And at this time, I will have Bishop Nancy Rosario to come with the Bible reading and true parents word. Bishop Rosario. Amen, praise God. God bless everyone. It's great to be here once again with all the great women and men of God, <laughs> all respect to the men that are here. Um, but it's wonderful to be with all of you. And I love the fact that Women in Ministry, ACLC, recognizes our women clergy and our women pastors, me being one of them. And, you know, as pastors, um, we kind of do everything. I feel like sometimes they say the men, but as a woman, I'm a carpenter, I'm a sweeper, I'm a cleaner, I'm a decorator, I'm an events coordinator, I'm in church now coordinating. Men. But I'm just glad that I could take this time to just spend it with all of you in prayer. And I'm looking forward to hearing the word of God, because once I hear the word of God, it just lifts me up and all the tiredness goes and all the worries go. And you just 
get infiltrated with the word of God and it just brings hope into your life and it brings joy into your heart. So God bless everyone. And I want to announce just quick, briefly that this morning at 4.30 in the morning, we had great grandchild number 29 was born. Wow. Baby wow. Girl. Congratulations. Congratulations. Amen. And we're waiting for one more that I think is due in about three months. That'll be number 30. <laughs> and it keeps growing. But I want to thank all of you. So at this time, um, the name of the Father, Son, and our Holy Spirit, I will read the word once it comes on the screen. Thank you. Thank you, young son. Psalm 1828 in the message says, suddenly, God, you floodlight my life. I am blazing with glory, God's glory. Amen. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to blaze with his glory. And so the same Psalm in the New King James Version reads, for you will light my lamp. The Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness. And tonight, if anyone out there on, on social media, if there is any darkness in your life in any form or manner through life struggles, we're in this world, in this earth. So we have struggles. The Lord Jesus says, said we will have troubles, but we will overcome. And tonight you will hear that he is a light. He lights our lamp and he will enlighten our darkness. And now I will share our Mother Moon's words. We're going to read her words read from Mother of Peace, a memoir by Dr. Hak Jahan Moon in page 158. My husband once called me a high priest. He said that in God's dispensation until this era, men were the high priest, but we are entering the age of the wife and women need to fulfill the priestly ministry. Amen. It is women whom God is calling to serve as the mediators of his and her forgiving, purifying, and regenerating, regenerating grace to all humanity. As the Last Supper approached, Jesus comforted his disciples saying, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. This passage condenses into a few words, the path I have walked. Even though all human <clears throat> beings have parents, as we have wandered through history without knowing God or the true way of life, we have felt like orphans. I have striven throughout my life to lead humanity to the welcoming, forgiving, rebirthing love of God, who is our heavenly parent. Beautiful. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, uh, for your lovely reading of True Parents' Word. And of course, this evening, we know that we are, uh, we will be blazing with God's love from our speaker this evening. Looking forward for that. At this time, I'm going to ask Young Son, we, we have an, an opening address, and that will be done by we by our Dr. Changshik Young, our national co-chair who is serving with Dr. Young. Dr. Young is serving with Dr. Rouse. Let's hear him. Your Excellency, women in ministry leaders, thank you so much for inviting me to share some remarks and this ACLC Women in Ministry Summit, honoring women pastors and first ladies, it is my pleasure to greet you today. Congratulations to all women clergy present in this wonderful summit. I want to also sincerely appreciate the National Co-Chair Women, uh, Archbishop Solange Lewis and Reverend Marilyn Kotule and uh, Minister Reiko Jenkins and the sub-regional co-chairs Bishop Nancy Rosario and Dr. Uh, Petra Kidwell Law and uh, Dr. Uh, Globinia Williams, as well as the tremendous movement of women clergy in all 50 states. 
thank you for thank you all for your great work for heaven as you know aclc women in ministry is one of the key minister ministries of aclc the american clergy leadership conference aclc took on the mission of rebuilding the family restoring the community and renewing the nation and world through christian clergy of all denominations working together in unity for god's kingdom aclc women in ministry was inspired by mother moon's encouragement for all women and especially women clergy to represent a mother's heart and feminine aspect of god this would appear obvious in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, we read, So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. It shows that in God's eyes, man and a woman together reflect God's image, both the masculine and feminine natures. Our founder, the late Reverend Sun Myung Moon and Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, who we call Father and Mother Moon, have been truly uplifting the image of God through the marriage blessing, where blessed couples represent God together as husband and wife. They have championed the uh, true family movement through, through family values and blessing movement. That's why I am so grateful that ACL's Women in Ministry has been reaching out to uh, many uh, women pastors and church first ladies to join together to fulfill their special role in building the kingdom of God by supporting one another and working together, bringing motherly heart and love throughout their communities. As a national co-chair of ACLC together with Dr. Ruan Rouse, we wish to honor you and women pastors and first ladies for dedicating your lives to fulfill heaven's call. Today we honor Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hale of Ray of Hope Christian Church in Decatur, GA, and First Lady Elino uh, Riley of the Freedom Hall of Church of God in Brooklyn, New York. And I recently had a most wonderful experience of visiting and preaching at her and her husband, uh, Bishop Riley's beautiful church in Brooklyn. I was truly impressed by your warm hospitality that so touched my heart. Thank you again for welcoming me and your church. When I think of our founder's message to the uh, clergy, I feel how important Christianity is to God's providence. And, 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 and as we study the principles of the behind the blessing movement and the true family movement, we understand how incredible is the value of the women clergy and church first the ladies working together with the pastor, uh, pastors to model those ideals and spread the blessing to their communities. That's why I especially want to commend the 50 women pastors who have become present presenters of the True Family Values of Teaching on Marriage and Family. This teaching is based on Bible as well as ex, uh, exposition of the divine principle, which is the core teaching brought to us by Father Moon after his spiritual experience meeting Jesus and learning of God and Jesus' deep sorrow since the fall of man. In my recent message at ACLC gathering and throughout the country, I have been inviting clergy to get to know this teaching more closely and commit to study the divine principle. And I am so happy and encouraged to learn that 128 ACLC women in ministry pastors are already studying the exposition of the divine principle through the 12 hour manual, going deeper into principles that God is teaching us in this age. I have been inspired to hear that you are establishing three key women pastors in each of the 50 states. Mother Moon has reminded us that we are now in the women's era of God's providence, and so we can bring harmony in the family, strengthen marriage, and setting an example for children and youth with a mother's heart. So I am hopeful that through women's in ministry, women clergy, and find the connecting point with the Mother Moon 
and create a strong bond to support the family, the community, and the nation. I have been saying we need to bring about a great revival, another great spiritual awakening in America. I believe that with a mother's heart, you play a vital role that can inspire all men and women, clergy and lay people to rise up, share the responsibility in their providential roles, and bring revival in the body of Christ, leading America and the world to a true and lasting peace under our heavenly parent. Congratulations again. God bless you all. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. We want to thank uh, Dr. Young for such a beautiful message to all of us on this platform. And um, we know that they serve um, under different hats, such as Dr. Luan Rouse, who served with Dr. Young as co-chair for ACLC. Um, Dr. Rouse could not have been here this evening because of his uh, um, many hats that he had to be wearing. However, he sends his greeting and his blessing to you. And at this time, we will have before us, Dr. Mark Abernathy serves as a co-president for ACLC and also the pastor for Connect Point in, of course, Atlanta. Dr. Mark Abernathy to the forum. To Good afternoon, seven, everyone. I hope everybody's um, having a great day. I, I really feel a great spirit here. Um, Pastor Hale, thank God we serve together in Atlanta. We've got to bring down uh, the walls of Atlanta. I'd love to connect more with you in the future. But I just wanted to say um, on behalf of ACLC, we are here to change our world. Um, and I really appreciate the women leaders that, in America that are standing up. There's back in the day, as most of you women know, this was a tough, tough dis, uh, situation to deal with. And this is why the world is in the place it's in now, because women has not been in leadership and women has not been in the leadership of the church trying to change some of this. And I'm so excited to see you first ladies and pastors working hard to lead our world. And I'm behind you 100%. The mission of ACLC uh, is to unify our clergy together. We want, as Christian pastors and leaders in America, we want to bring together the church. The church is not. We're probably one of the most segregated, uh, Martin Luther King says of the days, it's on Sunday. We seem to separate ourselves from our, our peoples that are in our world. And we, we we're trying to find a way to reconnect. And that's why... Um, Pastor Hale, that you're here with us today to even find ways that we can connect closer together because we want to rebuild the family. We want to restore our community. We want to renew our nation. This is something we want to rebuild, restore, and renew, and we want to change this. The Bible says, I think in Psalms 1 something, 133, I believe it says how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters and in leaders and whatever we can move forward to, uh, to um, work together or dwell together in unity. This is very, very important for us today to dwell together in unity, to build to God's kingdom. The church is losing people since the pandemic, uh, after this pandemic, and it's still a little out there. But the, the post-pandemic issues today, the people are not coming back to church. They're finding other excuses and reasons why we've got to bring God first again. And I'm excited about this event we're having today. Hopefully we'll have more. Hopefully we can have many other leaders uh, speaking with us in this area. We need to come together like never before. The coming together, we've got to find ways to break down our walls, break down the differences we have so that we can fight this battle together. It's better, there's more, we're more powerful together than we are separated. Love and appreciate every one of you and welcome Dr. Hale to this great family. And I hope it's just a start. Thank you, Dr. Abernathy. We are here to build, renew and restore. Thank you again for those words. God is good and he's moving mightily. At this time, I am about to 
uh, bring on to us. And I want to say that I'm doing this quickly. She's in Jamaica at the time um, in another conference down there, none other than First Lady Eleanor Riley. And Ellie, Dr. Eleanor Riley has an extensive bio. So in the interest of our time, I would like you to know with her permission that she is the wife of Bishop Riley, a mother, a writer, and a great gospel singer. After several years of a fruitful singing ministry in October, 1998, Eleanor Riley had recorded her, her debut album titled From the Many Who Have Triumphed. After experiencing setback in life, Flustered by the success of her first album, Eleanor then produced several others, not merely content with uh, uh, spreading the wing of the whole world through songs. The author, her first book, she's such a good writer, Ruin of My Later, also another just released book out of evil they have been endorsed as a must read for all and came to obtain um, various books that is sold you can get them at any store that sells books Eleanor has also founded uh, the time to gain back uh, and she has gained a bachelor degree in theology and a musical of uh, musicology at the international seminar in California. I am sure that in 2004, she has a tea and talk with Eleanor. 100 women in black event began this event was created to give women a place where they could talk about issues that only women could relate to. Learn from each other and build a better sense of self. At this time, please allow me to welcome to the floor none other than First Lady Eleanor Riley, the wife of Bishop Dr. Cecil Riley. Hello, everyone. Um, let me know by um, raising a hand if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, because Jamaica is a little bit farther from the United States. So I just want to make sure that everyone is hearing me. I greet you all this evening from the beautiful island of Jamaica. And I thank God for the opportunity that I have to come onto this Zoom, such a profound moment. I really looked forward to this and I thank God because, you know, meetings like this is really edifying. Meetings like this, um, like someone says, build, renew and restore. We are in this um, together. We are in this so that we can um, make life better. We are in this so that we can introduce Christ to those who have not known him. And I first must greet um, the Holy Spirit. Um, I greet those who are in the head of this um, planning committee. I greet Archbishop Solange Lewis. And I just heard Dr. Mark Abernathy. I've heard of him from my husband for so many years. And I think it's the first time that I'm really seeing him. But I thank him for his kind words to us. We know that after the pandemic, like he rightly said, um, a lot of people use that platform not to return to the house of the Lord. But the Bible said we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And as First Lady of Freedom Hall Church of God for over 40 years, I have seen it all. I have seen it all. I have seen um, and I've heard the many excuses that people would have why they are not coming out to church. Now they think that um, COVID is, is, is the ultimate. 
you know, this gives me such a good reason not to return to church. But I just want to let everyone know that the Bible said we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And I just want to say thank you all for having me. Thank you all for the opportunity. We realize that we are living in the last days. These are the last and trying days, and we are grateful to God for the opportunity where we can still tell still tell somebody that Jesus saves. And there's a song that says, which I love very much, waft it on the rolling tide, tell to sinners far and wide, Jesus saves. And that is the only reason why we are on here. And I trust that there are others that are Zooming that really do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that this opportunity presents itself to them presenting Christ to the world. Uh, someone said uh, a lot of churches now, what we're doing is just like a production. But being a first lady is not a production, it's not an act. You know, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of life that the Lord has called me to so that I can be an example to first ladies. And I trust that all the first ladies uh, are not there for the accolades. First ladies are not there because they wanna be in the limelight because that's not what we're all here about. We're all here about in presenting Christ. So I want to thank you again for the opportunity of um, speaking to you this evening. And I do thank, um, uh, like I said again, Archbishop um, Lewis, I do thank all those who are in, um, in the planning committee for the um, ACNC, um, ACN, A ACLC um, meeting. And I um, give God all the praise, the honor, and the glory for the opportunity. God bless you. Wow, thank you so much. Um, you know, First Lady Eleanor, I know how it is over there in Jamaica. And the word, of course, I, I, I was just praying as the Lord helped so nothing cut off, but we got it, we got it. You're not there for the accolades, of course, and God has truly blessed you. So now you will be blessed to hear your own voice in a song. So right now we will hear a musical offering in a video song that you have wrote for yourself, that you have presented to us. Now, let me hear that song. So you can listen to it, listen to your voice. Is like the ocean shifting and turning. The currents I know quite well, but some I'm still learning. Sometimes the tide so overtakes me, seemed I've sailed too deep. My soul swells with trouble. In waves all oh, so deep Your peace calm The storms in me My confusion I give to thee When I've tried all I can Step away from your plan. I cried, Lord, steer me through this and calm the storms in me. I know I'm not perfect. Chartered courses don't flow right. I'm often trapped in billows that I cannot fight. I hear the rapids roaring when I close my eyes to rest. 
Satan anxiously awaiting for my call of distress. The storms in me, my confusions I give to thee. When I've tried all I can, step away from your plan. I cried, Lord, steer me through this and calm the storm in me just a calm and gentle calm whisper gentle is all whisper. that I need when my ship is tossed and driven with you I'll succeed in the harbor of your love grace and mercy anchors me Jesus to calm the storms in me Lord please calm the storms in me my confusion I give to thee when Step away from your plan. I cried, Lord, steer me through this and calm the storms in me. I cried, Lord, steer me through this and calm the storms in me. to calm the storm in me. We wanna thank you for that musical offering. And I am sure today, those who are on Facebook watching, those who are on this platform, I am sure that this will bring such um, energy, such power, such love to them. And uh, I also want to say that many times, um, you know, Dr. Mrs. Riley, I listen to your songs like if I feel down, I put your CD in and I listen to that still voice and they have really settled my spirit. So we Amen. again want to thank you for those powerful words that you spoke before following this musical selection. Thank you again, ma'am. Okay, we're gonna move on with the program. I'm going to be introducing our next speaker and then we do what we really have to do. Amen, amen, amen. I just wanna thank God as we continue on this platform. So I will be introducing none other than Reverend Dr. Cynthia L. Hale to you right now. Reverend Dr. Cynthia L. Hale is the founding and senior pastor of the Ray of Hope Christian Church in Dakota, Georgia. Dr. Hale has been in ministry for 43 years, long time. She established Ella Pastoral Ministry Incorporated, a mentorship program that assisted in the development of pastors and power church leaders in 2004 and conveyed her first woman in ministry 
conference in 2005. In 2010, the 10, she authorized her first book, I Am a Piece of Work, Sister Happen by God, Shaped by God, I'm sorry. Dr. Hale presently serves as the chairperson of the IC3 Conference Board, the president of the Hampton University Ministry Conference, a member of the board of visitors of the Divinity School of Duke University, a member of the board of trustee at Holland University, a member of the UNCF, NFEI Advisory Council and a member of the Welcome US Council. Dr. Hale is an active lifetime member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Dr. Hale is a native of Roanoke, Virginia. She holds a Bachelor of Art degree from Hollins College. She holds a Master of Divinity degree from Duke University and a Doctor of Ministry from United Theological Seminary. Dr. Hale is a contribution writer for many books and publishing publication and the recipient of numerous honor and recognition. At this time, we will hear, this is our special speaker, our keynote speaker for this evening, church platform, Facebook helped me to welcome none other than Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hale. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Archbishop Lewis, thank you for that kind introduction. Reverend Kudalek, Minister Jenkins, thank you all for your gracious invitation to speak and share my story <clears throat> for your ACLC Women in Ministry Summit. Program participants and other beautiful and brilliant women and men in ministry, especially First Lady Eleanor Riley. What a joy it is for me to be here with you today. It's good to see Bishop Starlings, Dr. Young, and Dr. Abernathy. God said to the prophet Jeremiah, and indeed to all of us, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. I am the firstborn of four children to Harrison and Janice Hale. My parents named me Cynthia, which means bringer of light. Little did they know that they were naming me for my destiny. It was my mother who first introduced me to God, teaching me at an early age how to pray, making sure that I was in church every Sunday and actively involved. But it wasn't until I was nine years of old age that I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I remember as if it was only yesterday. The first thing I did after becoming a Christian was to tell everybody I could about Jesus. I remember meeting a man in the laundromat and asking him if he had a personal relationship with Christ. The next person I confronted was my father, who listened but was not all that impressed. So I told him, if you don't give your life to Christ, daddy, you're going to hell. Needless to say, I was a bit zealous in those days. In high school, I became the student pastor on campus, leading a Bible study before class and counseling students when they were in trouble or pain. But during my senior year, I led a young man named Richard to Christ. And after Richard got a few Bible verses under his belt, particularly the one in 2 Timothy, where 1 Timothy, where Paul talks about a woman learning in quietness and full submission and not teaching or taking authority over a man, he announced to the group that I would no longer be teaching Bible study. I quickly reminded him that I wasn't a woman yet and he wasn't a man. Nevertheless, 
I stepped down and became Richard's student, even though I had been studying the Bible for eight years and he only eight weeks. This experience prepared me for many future confrontations with men and women too, who did not believe that women should preach. There would come a day, however, when I would no longer be able to step aside or step down. I would have to stand my ground. After high school, I attended Hollins College. It was a setup. Albert Beersley, the chaplain, told me that I had the gifts and graces for ministry. I paid him no attention, but I was very interested in religion, so I became active in the chapel program while pursuing my degree in music. Hollins is where I grew up. It was at Hollins that I came into my own, reclaimed my voice that I had allowed Richard to silence and discovered the power of being a gifted woman who believed in her God and herself. It was in prayer that I wrestled with God about my destiny and my demons of insecurity and low self-esteem that God made clear to me in the words of Psalm 139, that I am fearfully, and wonderfully made, marvelous, extraordinary, marvelous, and wonderful are God's works. This became my mantra, though I didn't realize it at the time I would wrestle throughout my ministry with insecurity about my preaching, my leadership, my management of the institution and staff. There would always be questions about who called me, what qualified me to preach, lead a congregation, sit at the head of the table, in a meeting in my own church. I don't know what it is, but gifted women in particular seem to have this proclivity to think less of ourselves than we ought. I suppose that's what keeps us trusting and depending on God. We need God's power to do this. It was at Hollands that I clearly heard and answered my call. I thought I was preparing to be an opera singer Singing was my passion, but when I kept hearing that I had the gifts and graces for ministry, I knew God was speaking to me. Nevertheless, I kept ignoring God and everybody else. I didn't believe that women were called to preach. In my sophomore year, the chaplain announced that he was going on sabbatical and a woman was chosen as his replacement. And I arrogantly responded, no woman will ever preach to me. <laughs> well, a year later, I received my call in an undeniable way, and it was confirmed by my roommate on 100th night as she followed a Holland's tradition when seniors dressed up as their roommate's desire. She was dressed in a black ministerial robe looking like a preacher. I asked her what she was doing. She told me to get honest with myself. Everybody else knew this was my heart's desire. It was but I had to get a few things settled first. I asked God if I became a preacher, could I still wear pink? Could I carry myself and preach like a woman? I am a woman and I always want to maintain my femininity. The next thing I wanted to know was whether or not I could still be married and have children. I wanted to be married and have five or six boys. <laughs> God made clear that I could be myself as a woman, but he said nothing about being married and having children. There was something inside of me that knew that even though there are lots of successful female ministers and preachers who are married with children, I would not be one of them. So I chose ministry over marriage time and time again. I struggled with my decision through the years, dating and praying and hoping that I was wrong. When I turned 48, I finally let go and became comfortable with my singleness. It was then that I realized that I never could have gone to the place where I was in ministry, leading a mega church at that time of 10,000 as a wife and a mother. This was a hard choice to make. Being in ministry is lonely even when you're married, but not having anyone to share the intimate details of life, the heartaches and challenges has been the most difficult part of ministry for me. I'm grateful to have good friends to walk with me.
The next step was to go to seminary. At Duke, I fell in love with ministry. I settled once and for all the questions of whether or not I was called to preach. Not all of my male classmates agreed with me and told me so on a regular basis. It was difficult, but God, hallelujah, continually sent me sweet confirmations. Remember that dad who was not interested? I went home to preach my first sermon and my father came walking down the aisle and gave his life to Christ. Gardner C. Taylor came to the campus to preach, invited us to have breakfast, asked if we had been called to ministries. The brothers replied, looking straight at me, you know that God doesn't call a woman to preach. Dr. Taylor didn't even bother to respond. He just looked at me and said, Miss Cynthia, did God call you to preach? When I said yes, he replied, then don't worry about what anyone else thinks. God never wastes his material. And then a friend of mine and I, John Borens, were walking down the street in Pittsburgh, North Carolina, and we encountered a blind man who said to my friend John, who's that preacher walking with you? John asked the blind man, how did you know she was a preacher? The blind man said, I see the mark on her. I learned from these experiences that I no longer needed to question my call. I didn't need to argue with folks or try to defend my call. All that mattered was that I knew that God had called me before the foundation of the world. My gifts would make room for me. And they have. It was then that I became clear that I was called to be a senior pastor. I'm a visionary, a pace setter. I have the gift of administration and I love people. I wanted to pastor a church so that I could establish the kingdom of God on earth. I wanted to pastor a church so that I could share with others what Jesus has done in my life. I wanted to pastor a church and God gave me that opportunity. It wasn't the conventional way. No church would call me after I finished seminary, not even a 25 member church <laughs> that I was preaching for because they had lost their pastor. But God called me to start a church. God gave me an opportunity to develop a ministry that had his design and name on it. Oh, I wish I could tell you the story of the Ray. We do not have time, but let me just share with you that the Ray began with four persons meeting for Bible study in my apartment. And that church then grew to 25 and then to 40 and then 85 persons worshiping at Columbia High School. When I started the Ray, I didn't know what I was doing, but God led me every step of the way. What was clear was I was to go after unchurched, unsaved individuals. And that church grew and grew and grew. And I grew along with it. The questions never stopped. People even now continue to ask, who called you? Who qualified you? What gifts and abilities do you have? Like a man who came in one day and said, I'd like to see the pastor. And I said, I am the pastor. He said, I said the pastor, not the secretary. He said, what qualifies you? And I simply said, see the works that God has done in and through me. My ministry has always been to seek to liberate women and men from sin so that they can discover and walk into their destiny in wholesome and healthy partnership. I believe, like Dr. Young said earlier, that God created us in God's image and likeness. God has called us to establish his kingdom on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in my personal and professional relationships and in my style of ministry, I seek to model how this is done. As a strong, confident woman, now 70 years of age, who is on her way somewhere and is called to take her brothers and sisters with her. God bless you. Wow, wow, wow. Amen, amen. Thank goodness. My soul has been blessed. 
My spiritual appetite has been satisfied. Oh, glory to God. So much to say. But at this time, I'm going to yield my time and I'm going to ask Archbishop, our Patriarch George Augustus Stalin, to bring a remark at this time from Imani Temple. Wow, Hello. take it away, Archbishop. Thank you, Archbishop Solange Lewis, my beloved and esteemed sister. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name okay. together. I tell you, <laughs> Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hale, you had me spellbound by that personal testimony. And all I could think of as you shared that story, as you, as you told your story, sang your song and delivered the message of that last book that we find in Holy Scripture, the book of Revelation, where it says in Revelation chapter 12, they have overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Those powers and principalities, rulers of darkness, even in high heavenly places, were trying their best, their bestest, <laughs> to undermine that calling that God, the creator of all things, God, our heavenly parent, had prepared for you, as you stated, before the foundations of the world were even laid. When you started off, with a quote from the Hebrew scriptures, AKA the Old Testament, from Jeremiah chapter one, verse four, where the Lord God said, before I formed you in the womb and before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. You knew that your calling was right there in your mother's womb. It's amazing how we have been so uh, focused on a patriarchal, you know, uh, uh, a man-made notion of, of everything that we would think that a woman was not called or qualified to preach when the very first proclaimers of the good news, the very first evangelists were women, women at the tomb on the day of resurrection. Where were the men? The men had taken flight, even though they said they would never, Peter never would deny Jesus. Jesus already predicted before the cock crows, he will have denied me three times. And so when it came time for the glorious revelation of the resurrection, Peter and none of the apostles were to be found. The women were there, not only faithfully attending their master, but also going and spreading the good news. When you gave that personal testimony, you were so self-effacing, so generous in sharing with us how God has moved in your life. I was deeply inspired. I was strengthened by your conscientious and deliberate decision to take destiny into your own hands, moved by the genius of all that you knew had been embedded in you before the foundations of the world were laid and you said, if they won't invite me, if they won't welcome me, I'll create my own. <laughs> and that's exactly what you did. And trust me, my beloved and the same sister, you are better. You are a better person for having done what you did. That is a fact. And God is gonna continue to open up the windows of the storehouse, of his storehouse, his or her storehouse, to bless you beyond all measure. Because you said, yes, Lord. You said, yes, Lord, at every phase of your life, you said, yes, Lord. It could have been so easy to simply say the opposition, the resistance, the non-acceptance, the non-appreciation, the sense of trying to take my values away from me because I am a woman, that you did not allow that to deter you in any way, shape or form for moving forth in ministry. And now you stand among the greatest male preachers in the nation and you exemplify the power of an anointed 
appointed and approved woman of God. Yes, Dr. Hale, you have, you, you hold the triple A rating. You are anointed. You are appointed. And you are approved by God. And you have become now an example par excellence, really an iconic prototype figure to other women who are being, who are maybe questioning their calling to ordain ministry. All they need to do is when they have a problem, a woman, when a problem has, when a woman has a problem with whether or not she has been called to ordain ministry, all she needs to do, all she need do is to pick up a dictionary or an encyclopedia and turn to that page for an answer. And there they will see the face of none other than you, the Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hale. Yes, you are Cynthia. And you have honored us by your presence on this platform today. Keep on keeping on, oh noble woman of God. Keep on keeping on because the world needs you now more than it ever could have during your days of study at Duke University, my home state, in, in my home state of North Carolina. The world needs you now more than they could have ever done while you were doing your doctorate of ministry studies at United Theological. The world needs you now to continue to proclaim that unadulterated word of God. And, and lastly, what better example than to give your own personal testimony of how God moved in your life, not in a mysterious way, but in a very providential way, because you always wrestled with what that calling was for you. And God was telling you all along what your calling was. You just simply delayed it a little bit, but you can't run, you cannot hide. You can run, but you cannot hide. And God found you. He found you at that place where you would have the strength to go on, as I said, take destiny into your own hands and create a church that is now exalting the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Christ the Anointed One, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And you are leading women and men and children back to God. Thank you so much. And may God continue to open up the windows of the storehouse and bless you beyond all measure. Thank you. Thank you, Archbishop Stalin. Thank you so much for those powerful words that you've given on to our uh, guest speaker for this evening. Yes, we heard earlier from um, Dr. Riley, First Lady Eleanor Riley, who reminded us that our heart is like the ocean with all kinds of changes. She asked the Lord to calm the storm in us. And then my goodness, yes, Dr. Yale, you're certainly a brilliant of life. You stated God called her before you were found of this world. And God has called all of us, I wanna say that, to establish his kingdom on earth. Definitely, yes, we received that. And I am sure this evening, so much persons are commenting on your, 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 your talk, your, your testimony. And I am sure so much persons listen to both of you this evening and will take one word from your challenges that you've been through and will work their way through that. Thank you again. Just give me a few more minutes and we will be done. At this time, the hour has come where I'm gonna ask Reverend um, Marilyn Cthulhu to read the awards for me for both participants. Thank you, Archbishop. <clears throat> Eleanor Riley's. Yes, thank you. In honor of the First Lady Eleanor Riley, we recognize the outstanding faith, 
sacrifice and leadership you have provided as the first lady of the Freedom Hall Church of God. With the love of Jesus expressed through you, we commend your exemplary love to your family, church, community, and our nation, bringing God's love and life to all. And this is presented by the American Clergy Leadership Conference and also American Leadership Conference Women in Ministry. God bless you, First Lady Eleanor Riley. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Reverend Couture. And as you all know that Mrs. Riley is now in Jamaica, West Indies. As she returned, we will go to her ministry and we will present that to her directly. At this time, please um, do the honor of reading the same for our next present. Dr. Cynthia Hale. In honor of Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hale, we recognize the outstanding faith, sacrifice, and leadership you have provided as the senior pastor of Ray of Hope Christian Church. With the love of Jesus expressed through you, we commend your exemplary love to your family, church, community, and our nation, bringing God's love and light to all. And this is presented by the American Clergy Leadership Conference and also American Clergy Leadership Conference Women in Ministry. Congratulations, Reverend Dr. Hale. Is her plaque going to be presented? She has it. Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Put your hands together for Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hill and First Lady Eleanor Riley. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so wow. much. You feel my wow, spirit. that was great. Yeah. You Thank feel my spirit. Oh my God. So great. <laughs> yes. Wow, Federal Express. God just lead you in right. that direction. God yeah. just lead you. I just love it when God leads and guides you in the direction that these women sitting on this platform today or on Facebook would like to hear. So I thank you so much. Um, at this time, let me hear from Dr. Michael Jenkins that's come to us and to give thanks. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Archbishop Lewis, and thank you to all of the women in ministry, the co-chairs, uh, Minister Rako Jenkins, my wife, and Reverend Kotulek, and also uh, Dr. Uh, Rosario, Bishop Rosario, and especially Bishop Solange Lewis. God bless you all. Women in ministry, such a joy. And Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hale, we can't thank you enough. Yeah. I remember when Robin was able to connect with Erica, who helped us so much, and we set up a call for you and I and Bishop Stallings, and we had that wonderful call. You were so kind, and we're so grateful to see this time when you could be with us and inspire us so much. Look what God has done. I will never forget your sermon. It, it encourages us all to see how you just followed the Lord and started with just a few in your apartment and then it expanded and expanded. Look what God has done. You're a beautiful, beautiful light for all of us, for the family, for the nation and the world. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank wow. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Michael Jenkins, for those words to us. And at this time, I will ask um, Minister Rachel Jenkins to say a short word and make a presentation to all of us. Yes. Okay. Wow, what a, what a beautiful, beautiful seminar, summit today. And Dr. Reverend Cynthia Hale, oh my gosh. Now mm -hmm. you are my pastor. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm going to come to your church soon <laughs> to be uh, worship with you. So thank you so much for really deep message that come to heart and the spirit. And you anointed us so much today. And thank you so much. And uh, First Lady Eleanor, wow, beautiful, beautiful message and such a beautiful song. You cried with the music and song that you created as original, your original song. And thank you so much for being with us today. And we have a special presentation to all of us, all of you, uh, beautiful, beautiful pastors, first ladies, and especially Reverend Cynthia Hale and all wonderful pastor and hey. Eleanor. This is for you, all Thank of you. us, all of us, and that's one also. And we have Reverend Eleanor Hale. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Lord God, today we are that ray of hope and we join, Lord God, with our sisters and we say yes, yes, yes to your will, to your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen and as you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank Amen. You Praise so God. Thank you. Bless Thank everyone. You. God bless you all. God bless wow. you. God what bless a beautiful all event. of you. And so, for all of you on this panel and those who are on the Facebook, do the work for Christ. So when someone asks you how, what qualifies you, you can gladly say the work that I do. That's mm -hmm. what qualifies mm -hmm. me. That's what we learned today. We learned that when you start with two, you can go to three, you can go to four, and you can climb those mountains. Again, <laughs> Dr. Cynthia Hell, you have filled our soul. Again, yeah. Dr. Riley, your song has give us energy to all of you here. I thank you. I thank you from the depths of my heart. Keep praying, keep climbing. Amen. God is able. Wow. Bye. Merry Bye. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. God bless Christmas. you. Yeah. Hi. Merry Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Christmas. you for Christmas. Christmas. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Women in ministry. Wonderful. Yes. Reverend. Yes. Lord. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Dr. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye Wonderfully thank done. You First Lady Eleanor. First Lady Eleanor, thank you so much. God, God bless, bless you. you. For beautiful, beautiful <laughs> music and your beautiful Everything. words. God bless yes. you. God bless you. God bless, God bless you. you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. So okay, much. we're going to get jealous now because somebody's <laughs> coming to your church, so I'm coming too. <laughs> oh, okay, come on. I look forward to seeing you all. Love you. Oh, yes. 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 We'll come to church. Thank you. <laughs> bye -bye. Okay. Love you. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Good evening. We Thank wish you, you a Merry bye. Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas oh, and a Happy New Year. Year. God bless you. Woo! Thank you, Minister yeah. Jenkins. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you all for your love. All of you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you, those of you on Facebook. Thank you Yay. for coming. Thank you so much. <laughs> we love you. Reverend Mama Joy, thank you for coming. God yes, you. Yeah. And Mr. Christmas. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm Reverend Bishop Randy Francis. Thank Bishop you for being Anthony with us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you and for Reverend coming. Reverend Mama Randy Joy. Francis. Thank <laughs> you always so much. Support us. God Abraham. bless you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Reverend Randy. Bishop Drekis. Of course, Susan. Bishop Stalin. Minister Susan. Stalin Susan Edwards. We love Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Katarik. Archbishop okay, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love, love, love you. Bye. Love all of you. Love, love, love. And there's bye. nothing you can do about me loving you. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye.